Welcome to another exciting and top-notch episode of Cars with Big Boy Trev. My name is Big Boy Trev. My name is Burigi. And today we have something amazing, including something from Ford named after the tallest mountain in the world. But first things first, let's check out the news. On to our first item for the news. AA Automobile Association of Kenya have just celebrated their centenary celebration. 100 years of existence in Kenya. This organization is older than Kenya. We really were in that discussion in that forum. What is the highlight of that AA forum and what do Kenyans expect of the AA as a brand, as a club where enthusiasts come in and talk about motoring? Well, like, um, like we had during that event, they are the first people to map out a lot of the roads that yes. are in Kenya. Yes. So they actually used that car, I think it's a 25 slash 10, the B3 yes. that, they, that they showed, of course, not KCC on Saturday. Yes. And basically they are integral to the forming of Kenya as a country. They are integral to motoring. Yes. And now it's actually, what they are wondering is what they're going to do for the next 100 years. Wow. So they've been serving Kenya all this time. Now we are looking into the future. More stuff, more stuff available, more cars, more kinds of mobility, and where AA fits in. And uh, it looks like it's going to be quite dope. I can tell you for a fact that AA have really invested, are trying to create a curriculum for drivers. Remember, they're the ones who are the pioneers of road safety in the yep. country. They are the ones who mapped out the roads. All the distances you see, say from Kisumu to Nairobi to Nakuru, they're the ones. Uh, the, guy, the guy who was Galton in... Galton Fenzi yes. Memorial, the one that's outside GPO, they've also renovated that just for the 100-year anniversary. So good stuff. It was an amazing event. And I can't wait to see what AA has for Kenyans in the, in the future now. Well, of course, you know AA also does offer driving courses um, if you want to be certified if you drive like cars globally yeah. international do, driving license absolutely and yeah. of course you do have quite a number of curriculums designed to keep you and your family safe so make sure you visit aa as soon as you can get registered and enjoy the benefits of being an aa member <laughs> on to our second news item Nissan have just unveiled their state-of-the-art service facility along Mombasa road where the former yana tire center used to be they have invested millions of shillings to ensure that Nissan has the capacity to service the many cars that are on our road. So Mr. Mirigi, what did you think about the service center? You saw, you saw it, we were there. What were your thoughts on it? Well, I mean, it's part of now their global commitment to now what they're calling the Nissan customer way. So in, in addition to building the physical lo location itself, they've also worked on a lot of training and they're going to use that facility as a training facility. So you should expect better service, not only at that new facility, but at any Nissan service facility across East Africa. Remember also Nissan services, all other cars that are not meant for this market, the JDMs that are being imported, please visit if you have a Nissan Sephiro, if you have a Nissan Skyline, or the interesting ones that you've seen on the road, please visit, they'll give you a good quote. They have actually affordable packages for service that start from right about 5,000 shillings all the way to whatever amount that you think you may want to give them. But visit the Nissan showroom right along Mombasa Road at the Yana Old uh, Tire Facility and get yourself good product and service courtesy of Nissan. So on to our last news item, and we have something amazing from Ford. They've just launched the brand new March E crossover full electric vehicle. The electric bag has caught Ford. Mr. Murigi, what do you think about the design? Well, these guys keep saying there's no replacement for displacement, but as it turns out, batteries are the thing. Absolutely. More power, more horsepower, more torque, and more torque available from zero. Yes. So it's going to be fun to drive if they can bring some of those dynamics that they're used to uh, from Ford. And then, of course, having the thing being built Ford tough, it's going to be quite something. Because the crossover segment, as yes. you are aware, is the largest segment right now. Absolutely. Lots of, uh, lots of competition, yes. lots of stuff that's available. So it's very interesting to see them putting a crossover, first of all, and then making it electric. We are going to see very interesting things from Dearborn, Massachusetts. Ah, Kabisa. Yeah. And again, remember also they've put the Mustang nameplate on this particular SUV. So you expect the heritage of the pony, 55, 56, 57 years now, um, now translating into an SUV, a crossover that now people want to buy. Now, the stats are very simple. 0 to 100 in less than 3.5 seconds. And of course, you do have a range of about 500 kilometers. And the cost, now in the States, it's going to cost about $43,000, that's about $4.3 million. But of course, because of our duties and things, probably expect it to be about $8 million if and when it comes to Kenya. But we can't wait to sample it. Obviously, Cars Big Boy Trev will give you the exclusives. So you, you never know. Watch out. We might just do an exclusive coming soon to a TV near you. Welcome to the CBBT feedback segment. We talk about the feedback that you gave us by sliding in the DMs. 
Thank you for the support. Thank you for the kind words. And of course, we've chosen one that was very unique to us. Now, we have a lady called Jane Mwangi, who's an ardent viewer of CBBT. And she says, hi, Trev, just watch the CX-5 review. And I have a very bad experience with the CX-5 diesel engine, which I bought in July this year. And up to now, has stalled because of lack of spare parts. I cannot get these spares and I have several people who have had the same experience. Kindly requesting if you could help me out. Well, Jane, I think Mirigi has some answers for you. Well, first of all, it's important to note that the car we were driving last week was the 2019 CX-5. That, of course, now is a 2.5-litre non-turbo petrol. So I think the problem you're having was with the car that was imported. That's fine. Imports are not a bad thing. In fact, like we mentioned, all, of course, now very large number of cars that come to Kenya are imported. But we like as much as possible to let people know that you can walk into a showroom, the prices are good, and the after-sales service is available. Because what dealers do is what we call triple S, sales, spare parts, and service. So what I'd ask you to do is because everybody, every dealer in this market has invested a great deal of money in making sure that they have the training, yes. they have the parts, and they have the facilities to give you after-sales service. So walk into CMC and let's see what they can do with you with that vehicle. But when it comes to imports, I think uh, you had mentioned there are some tips yes. and tricks that we can give our listeners. Yes. Now, CBBT is offering a platform where we'll advise you on the cars to buy. Of course, because of lack of information, you might have chosen the wrong type of engine or the wrong uh, setup of the vehicle, which is not meant for this market. So we'll try as much as possible. All the cars that we review, even if it's a grey import, we will tell you which one to buy. For example, the CX-5, the diesel, has an issue because of our diesel quality. So obviously, when it comes here, it will be uh, you know, affected and you'll have issues with your diesel engine. But if you're buying a CX-5, which is grey import, please buy the 2-litre petrol. Less issues, less drama, and of course, come and service it at MC Motors. We'll give you the best deals on wheels. Come in, step inside the American luxury, the version of the American quality, courtesy of the Ford Everest. As you can see, everything is square and well laid out, very American, very stylish, very butch. And of course, you can see the words of the Everest emblazoned on this particular panel gives this car that feeling that it is on top of its game. Well, really, let's start with the center console. You do have a color display, 10 inch, that houses the climate control, the audio system, which actually kicks a lot of bass and you have something interesting called the Ford Sync 3. Now Ford Sync 3 allows you to control certain aspects of the vehicle without taking your eyes off the road. So for example, I want to go home so I'm going to command it. Take me home. Navigating to home. You see that? Head southeast toward Kiambu Road. It gives you all the information that I need and of course another function would be do I need a jacket tomorrow? No, it won't be cold in Kiwaroga tomorrow. Expect a high of 19 and a low of 11. You see that? So basically it becomes your personal assistant. You're able to interact with the vehicle and it will give you feedback and it will help you decide on certain things like if you're going on a road trip, do you need like to carry a jacket or if you're getting lost, the maps will actually help you navigate easily without any stress and that is why it is called the Everest. On top of its game and not many people actually have this capacity to do this. Moving over to the instrument pinnacle, you have one analog speedometer dial that actually gives you the speed reading and on the left you have auxiliary digital display that houses anything to do with the automated system that's here, Ford Sync 3, audio system and telephone. You can actually control all these functions without taking your hands off the steering wheel using these satellite buttons on the left hand side of the steering wheel. Now, on the right hand side is a critical aspect, the display that houses all the critical information you need while driving the car. So for example, you can see your temperature level, your fuel level, and of course, all the emergency aids. For example, you do have blind spot assist, it will blink and show on, on this other side. Lane departure assist, when you get too close to the, to the lane and you move on the side, it will vibrate the steering wheel and you'll actually feel the car pulling towards the side. And of course, autonomous emergency braking and hill descent and all those things that you need to control the vehicle all there on that instrument binnacle so your eyes remain level and you're able to control the car without any stress. Now, 
moving on to this other side of course you do have uh, the lower part of the center console where it has uh, four knobs basically just to control uh, climate and radio of course and, and, and then also down here you do have quite a number of auxiliary ports auxiliary ports are used to charge your devices laptop tablet all those things you can actually charge and then you do have two usb ports over there just to control also to put in you can plug in your usb actually and also charge your phone at the same time so a lot of practicality in this cabin on the gearbox console you do have obviously the main gearbox uh, setup which is basically a tectronic version of this particular car 8-speed automatic and of course you have terrain response now terrain response system which is a Land Rover property thing also is also found on a Ford which is now called terrain management system this allows you to control certain aspects of the gearbox to control the torque de delivered to all the four wheels without any stress so be it sand, rat, mud or even snow you're able to control that and of course also you have hill descent control all placed in one dial So the rest of the people, first row and second row, how comfortable is Everest? You're going to talk to Mirigi, who's going to share much more about his experience in the Everest. So right here in the back of the Ford Everest, you can see there's a lot of space. I'm very comfortable in these leather seats. This front seat is set to Trevor's sitting position. He's six foot tall. There's still a lot of knee room for me over here. You do have air conditioning controls with the vents that are coming out in the roof. And like the Ford Ranger, there is a full plug over here that allows you to plug in a laptop to charge more stuff as well as a 12 volt socket and basically a lot more safety including curtain airbags at the back here making sure your family is going to be safe but for more practicality in this thing let's check out the third row and the boots as you can see inside here there is a lot of space inside this boot with the seats folded down massive space for you and your staff and you can see the additional cup holders for the third row speaking of that third row it is now electrically adjustable you can raise it by just pressing a touch of a button and those two extra seats are available for your pals in a pinch or for your kids every day so let's take it on the road and see what the ford everest has to offer Hi guys and welcome to CBBT and today we are talking about road safety and you cannot talk about road safety in this country without talking about the AA. They are turning 100 this year, they started in 1919 with a guy called Galton Fenty and to get more information I'm here to talk to the CEO of AA of Kenya, Mr. Francis Theory. Come let's see what's up. During the coronavirus period, we didn't have vehicles, we didn't have motoring and the story of motoring in this country started with AA. Um, when the Automobile Association, by then it was the Loyal East Africa Automobile Association was started, um, I think with less than probably 10 people, um, and now has grown to 100,000 plus uh, members. By the time it was starting, it was starting to start thinking about motoring in this uh, country. And we started this journey by asking ourselves, we don't have even a single road, how do we do that? And so Galton Fenzi, uh, who started AA, uh, started by thinking about the roads and so navigating the roads from uh, Nairobi to Mombasa to Khartoum to Dar es Salaam you know uh, making sure that we have a road to the next stage now which was to put the first um, tarmac on Mombasa road that actually was he has to do like what we call now the Harambe nowadays at that time it was actually getting friends together to uh, shanga some money and you know do the roads and after now they had the road, they had to look for a vehicle to test the roads. And that, that vehicle, the first trip vehicle, which was borrowed, actually it was borrowed, it was on loan to Kenya to test the roads. The first uh, vehicle which came, and now it was the first one now to navigate through up to Mombasa or to drive up, up to Mombasa, which is the, the B3, we call it uh, normally the B3, but it's a really 12 uh, stroke 50 um, model of vehicle. And we'll be displaying that uh, during the, the celebration on 23rd of November. Then when we had the vehicle now, I think it, after we had the first, the second and the third vehicle, the question of where do you get the petrol, um, you know, to run the vehicles. And then they started thinking about the depots, you know, starting the first depot in this country and so on and so forth. And so when I say the history of this country cannot be told without talking about AA. If you look at the number of vehicles in the, on our loads today, there are millions. But it started from that Harbour Bag Cloud. 
And so a lot of work that was done by Gartron Fenty, who we still remember. The Safari Rally in this country, if you remember, A has led the Safari Rally for many, many, many years. Very successful. Of course, that we have now given it to the government, and I'm happy that it's coming back uh, to our country. Uh, in terms of load safety, uh, which is our mantra actually, we've done a lot in this country to support in load safety. From auditing the roads in this country, uh, I think we were the first one to audit more than 2,600 kilometers of load and guide the government, give them um, a report on um, you know, the status of our load and what needs to be done, including a lot of work allowed load safety up until when uh, NTSA was formed. And again, I want to remember that we played a big role um, when that was happening in giving information, supporting until the, the body was formed. Um, the Kenya Loads Board, um, again, given our, our inform, the information that we have uh, from our affiliation with the international world, um, was started by us. Uh, we played a big part in um, when the Kenya Loads Board was being formed. The reason why we have this event is more or less to celebrate um, what we've done in this country. And so it's not a celebration of A Kenya. It's not just a celebration of members of A of Kenya, but it's a celebration of Kenyans in terms of what they have been able to achieve. And so what are we doing? We'll have a family day. Um, the event will be on 23rd at KICC, the open grounds. We have a family day. We have uh, a lot of fun for the family. We will have a motor show. We'll be showing those old vehicles, the classic vehicles. We'll have um, many of the people that we walk this journey together coming and you know, just talking about the journey we've, we've been having together. On top of that, we'll have what we call an auto clinic. An auto clinic is our members will be on the general public. This time we'll be allowing them. You come with their vehicles. We'll be able to check their vehicles. I'll be able to guide them on you know, the conditions of their vehicles and what need to be done. So we call it an auto clinic. And the showstopper will be selling the classic vehicles. So there'll be an auction for the classic vehicles. <coughs> you know, um, those um, beautiful vehicles. And I know a lot of people have been wanting to own one of them. And this will be an opportunity for them. In fact, we'll be selling one of the oldest Cadillac, a brew and so. Uh, it's time for people to come and see what we'll be having on this day. And then in the evening, we'll have a member's dinner at the same place. Welcome to another exclusive review courtesy of Cars with Big Boy Trev and today we are sampling something from Ford, the Everest which belongs to the mid-size SUV category who the key players include the Toyota Prado, the Toyota Fortuna, the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport and many others that are coming on the pipeline. So what makes this particular Everest different? Let's start with the platform. Now this particular car is based on the Ranger T6 platform, the renowned one and if you know the Ranger platform it means study ability to maintain composure on certain situations. It has a strong chassis made out of aluminium. It has quite a number of safety features to enhance its drivability and of course it's tough and durable and can handle the rough rumble and tumble of Africa including Kenya which is part of that um, and of course many other things. So let's start with the engine. Now this particular one is a 3.2 litre inline 5 producing 147 kilowatts and 417 newton meters that sounds a lot and all this power is sent to the four wheels courtesy of an 8-speed automatic which is actually paired to something called the terrain management system which we will discuss later on now this allows this car to express full potential of giving you enough power like this that's a power and smoothness of a five cylinder and yet be able to return a good economy fuel figure of about 10 kilometers to the liter which is not bad for 3.2 liter of course you can get this 
particular Everett in different derivatives, you also have a 2.2, which is more efficient. And of course, with the new generation 2020 Everest, you do have a new 2 liter engine that produces 157 kilowatts and 500 newton meters. And Kazu Big Boy Travel will be the first to give you the lowdown on this particular car. So, how does it feel on the road? It feels very mute. I can tell you for a fact, Ford have employed something called active voice cancellation that, in, you know, quiets the cabin. It is very quiet, very steady, a lot of noise, vibration and harshness has been hushed to ensure that you have a supple ride across the car. A lot of bushings underneath, of course, on the cross members just to ensure that you have a smooth ride as you traverse our roads, be it tarmac, be it maram, be it any kind of surface you're able to drive the Everest with ease. So guys, when it comes to ride and handling, now this is the forte of the Everest. Because it's based on the Ranger chassis, it's been stiffened to ensure that you have good road manners courtesy of the aluminium chassis which is 33 per percent stiffer than the previous generation and of course you do have a refined suspension when i talk about suspension up front you have double wishbones that allow you to control the vehicle precisely you know where the nose is pointing at any given time and at the back you have five link a coil suspension that allows also you to control the back from you know bouncing out and, and making those uh funny funny flickering as you drive across Curves and crest. In terms of safety, the Everest has quite a number of key components. Active and passive safety components that prevent you from getting into an accident. Now, when you talk about active safety, you have the likes of anti lock braking system and electronic stability control that prevents you from losing control and maintaining composure on any given surface. Plus, you have the additional now. Lane departure warning, autonomous braking, emergency autonomous braking, you do have cross traffic alert and of course you do have uh, lane departure assist. So it vibrates uh, when you cross the line because it has a stereo camera over here. So if you cross the line and it's on, it will vibrate and it will tag you along. In case all hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the 5 star Euro end cap safety cell that surrounds the cabin to protect you and your family from harm's way. And of course you have multiple airbags, I think there are six, and plenty of other things like a soft touch padding on different surfaces. And of course you do have the ability of Ford Sync to call an emergency number that you preset on the system. How cool is that? So Trevor has shown you what this thing can do when it's on tarmac and on the road it's a very nice thing. But here we are off the road deep in the heart of a tea farm in Limuru. And I can tell you here, even when the road has ended and you're now no more tarmac and you're off the road this is a fantastic platform here you can start to feel the fact that this is built on the platform of the ford ranger the t6 and you can feel that in everything we are doing right now the lovely thing about this is this steering the steering is very light it's electrically assisted and it allows you to put the car exactly where you want it to be it's very responsive you can feel everywhere every single wheel and what it's doing this has there you go <laughs> like i was saying put your foot down and you can place the car exactly where you want it to be this has very good approach and departure angles which means you can get into and out of things very easily you can set this to four wheel drive low and lock the rear differential i've not felt the need to do any of this one of the advantages that the everest has over the ford ranger is that it doesn't have leaf springs at the back it's a multi-link suspension like trevor said at the back and that makes it very comfortable on the road and surprisingly incredibly comfortable off-road as well one of the key features that this has is hill descent control which allows me with the press of one button to lift my foot off the brake and to allow the car to go down a hill very comfortably very relaxed you just leave all you need to do is just do the steering which i said steering is also very nice so a lot of these cars features work off the road as well and they work amazingly so everything that the ford ranger pickup can do this can do as well but it's carrying it's carrying seven of your people in relative luxury style and convenience so guys you've experienced the pinnacle of ford engineering courtesy of the everest 
It is tough, stylish and packed with plenty of safety features, not forgetting value for money. Mr. Mirigi, what was your experience with the Everest? I had to take it off-road and off-road it handles just as well as the Ford Ranger pickup, which means this thing is a beast off the road. On the road, it has great manners and all the technology you can imagine. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, there's a camera in the front here that has traffic sign recognition. It'll actually tell you you're driving too fast. I'm very impressed with this thing. The range of technology it has, off the charts. Wow. Bay, how much is it? Kenyans want to know how much this car costs. Well, entry level on this, the 2.2 liter diesel, starts at 6 million, but this that we are driving right now is a limited edition that comes in at 8.9 million shillings. Only. And also yep. comes with a 300,000 kilometer warranty, whichever comes first. And you have Ford Protect, which is a warranty extension plan courtesy of the dealer. Now, the arrivals also include the Toyota Prado, the Toyota Fortuna, the Pajero Sport, and the Isuzu MUX, which will be coming to a screen near you right on our show. That's it, folks. Sadly, thank you so much for joining us on Kazu Big Boy Trev, as always. It's an honor. If you have any questions, comments, or queries, don't hesitate to write to us at see on social media channels below, and we'll read them next week. Signing out, this is Big Boy Trev. This is Mirigi. Drive safe and be safe.